Drag makeup tutorial, baby. Let's go. Once again, as always, pop off the shirt, pop on the wig cap, and clean the sides of the face with rubbing alcohol on a tissue so as to apply face tapes. But first, we should apply, of course, sp uh, Prosade, not Spirit Gum. Prosade to um, better adhere the tapes to my skin. And while I wait for that to dry, I am setting up the face tapes. It's just a little elastic band with a piece of metal at the end that you hook through a hole that uh, comes with the tape. And then uh, attaching tapes above the eyebrows on the cheekbone. And today I t attached uh, extra ones underneath my ear to pull back that mouth skin. I was going for a super tight face for this look, as tight as I could make it. So I pulled everything back latching it behind my head with the little latches that it comes with. And now I'm adding some Elmer's glue to um, my Widow's Peak, my sideburns, and my eyebrows. The Widow's Peak and sideburns uh, was to prevent flyaways from uh, popping out of the wig cap. And now just uh, putting the glue stick on the eyebrows, um, layering it up, popping a headband on to hold the face tapes and elastics in place. And now I'm cleaning off my lips with rubbing alcohol and applying Prosade. For this look, I decided to make gigantic Scarwax lips, and that is what I am doing currently. Pulling out a bunch of Scarwax, molding it in my uh, fingers, with my fingers, to make it malleable, and then popping it on my face on top of the Prosade and just starting to mess around with it. Trying to blend it into my lip, blend it together, because I used two pieces. I was going for a Cupid's bow at first, and then I decided to do away with that idea and just do that, uh, I forget what it's called, that arched lip kind of thing. I underestimated the amount of scar wax that I needed, so I popped some more on, blending it all together to the best of my ability. This scar wax is incredibly sticky. I found that it helps to dip my fingers into water when working with it. Now I'm going in with a little metal wire uh, to attempt to add some lip-like detail to the lips, those little lines that we all have. Uh, and now I am applying scar wax to the bottom lip. I wasn't planning on doing this at first, but then I made the upper lip so very gigantic that I realized I needed to do the bottom too. And I'm very glad that I did in retrospect. It was absolutely necessary. So at this point, I started to enjoy myself immensely. I had a lot of fun doing this look. It was just so outrageous. Um, and I, in a strange way, I just felt so pretty with these giant lips. I don't know. Um, that happened. Uh, yep, yeah, there I am feeling myself. You can see it uh, every now and then. Trying to add detail to the bottom lip as well with those wires and just fine tuning, adjusting, adding extra layer of glue. Um, I try to do that whenever I have a free second and the glue has dried. Now just for fun, really, I'm going in with uh, flesh-colored uh, eyeshadow to try to blend the lips into my face. Uh, just to give me an idea of what it looks like, or what it would look like if those were my actual lips. <laughs> and uh, again, applying more layers of Elmer's glue. I usually try to aim for at least three layers of glue or else my eyebrows will start to poke through. Now I'm applying primer to my face. That is a putty primer, um, an expensive, fancy putty primer. I really like it. It smells really good <laughs> and it just fills my pores in beautifully. Um, gave a quick blow dry to the eyebrows and then powdered it with translucent loose powder. And now I'm going in with a gray Mehron, um cream stick and just going in with a beauty blender sponge, dipping it onto the stick and then dabbing it onto my face. Using a brush for the difficult to reach areas around those giant lips. And now I uh, tried to use new this new eyelid primer that I got, and I, it was silly. I kind of <laughs> gave up on it very quickly. Um, and now I'm going in with another Mehron stick, a white cream stick for the highlight. And I did not add a cream contour for this look. Usually when I do a colored looks like this, um, I will just add white on top of it and sort of blend it with whatever color is already there and then 
accentuate any contour shadows with powder later. Going in with a beauty blender and just blending out that white highlight. Um, I've mentioned this in other uh, videos that I've made. The Meron sticks are difficult to work with sometimes because um, when blending with a sponge, a lot of the makeup tends to get lifted off of my face. Uh, so if you see me going back in and adding little extra splotches of foundation, that's why. Now I'm going in with translucent powder, loose powder, again dipping the beauty blender into it and just setting everything down. Um, with a cream foundation you must set it with powder or else you will be very unhappy later. Looking for something, ah, eyelid primer. This is the stuff that I like to use. It's a white P. Louise uh, zero zero uh, white <laughs> eyelid primer, super thick. I really like it. Um, I applied it liberally to my lid and then I started to um, sketch out the crease for my my new eyelid. And it was this was a very easy makeup look in some ways because I just used blacks and whites and grays. So I went in with a black eyeshadow and sketched it out and then blended that color out as much as I could and then went back in with the eyeshadow uh, primer, eyelid primer, to cut that crease and make it very sharp and defined because it got a little blurry as I was blending the eye. I set that down with a white pressed powder and then I went in and started to work on the eyeliner. I have been using a black Meron stick for this. I love these sticks for things like this. Um, I am planning on experimenting with actual eyeliner in the future. I think that the uh, color will be much more vibrant than this stuff, but this works in a pinch, absolutely. This is what I've been doing for quite some time now. I'm setting that uh, Meron liner down with eyeshadow powder. I got a new palette recently and I have been experimenting with it and the black color is absolutely gorgeous. I love it, love it. Um, just fine tuning that eye, going in and working on the bottom area, adding a little white, uh, probably the Meron stick to the corner of the eye and then extending the um, black powders below and the black Meron stick below as well, and adding a little triangle at the corner of my eye. I don't know if you're able to see it, but that's a little fun thing that I have enjoyed doing lately. And now I do the same exact thing on the other side. Uh, I wonder what I'm gonna talk about while I do this, because I've kind of covered everything already. I've said this in a previous video uh, tutorial, I can see why so many, you know, big wig makeup tutorial people will just do one side of their face at a time because it's really just a repeat of what has already transpired. But, you know, oh well. <laughs> I am trying to show the entire time lapse of my makeup looks with with commentary obviously, and I hope that that's helpful because it'll show you my my workflow unedited. Um Start to finish, this is what I do when I do makeup. And you're gonna see mistakes, you're gonna see lots of pauses to change the music that I'm listening to and, and uh, things like that. And you'll have to sit through the, the humdrum mundaneness of doing two eyes. I gotta do that when I do makeup, so you have to suffer with me, mwahaha. <laughs> Going in and sketching out eyebrows. I wanted to do a super arched eyebrow for this look. Um, and I add a dot at the inner corner of my eye, and then I follow the, the edge of my nose up <laughs> past the outer edge of my iris, up onto the spot that I want to have the eyebrow arch. Oh goodness, I've tried to explain this before. It's it's hard to explain without visual help. It's a trick to sketch out your eyebrows. Hopefully one day I'll be able to explain it properly and you will understand. I added some white cream underneath the eyebrows both to clean up the eyebrow edges and to make the uh, brow bone pop. Uh, and then I set that with white powder. Now I'm going in with a pressed powder. Um, a white pressed powder and just uh, accentuating the, the highlight that was already pretty much built into it. 
Um, getting the cheeks, getting the forehead, getting underneath the cheeks at the, towards the, the bottom, the jawline, and then the center of the nose. And now I'm going in with black eyeshadow and uh, accentuating the contour. I think it's the the, yeah, the black color um, that I used before. And now I'm working on the nose, sculpting the nose. Um, it always comes to life with the powders. That's when you can really work on it, blend things out, and get it looking super pinched. And I got one bulbous nose, so I gotta work on it a lot. Going on the lips with a black eyeshadow, just to kind of see if black is indeed what I wanted to do for the lips. There, I was debating red briefly, but it, no, black, black was the way to go for sure. I added a lot of loose powder underneath my eyes, um, extra loose powder to apply glitter to my eyelids. I added the loose powder because if any glitter falls onto my face, which will happen, it falls onto the loose powder, which can then be brushed away, leaving my face glitter free for the most part. Um, and to apply the glitter, I just added yet another base of that um, eyelid primer and then popped the glitter right on top of it. Going in with a liquid black lipstick onto the lips. Um, I would love to be able to figure out how to keep the uh, scar wax smooth. It gets crunchy. What can you do? Uh, now I'm going in with a water-based black uh, body paint color. Uh, and I'm just sketching out a random sort of like abstract um, shape on my body. I had an idea to do something like this and I just sort of rolled with the punches, um, tried to make it angular. And then I went in with white and sort of just went along uh, the sides of each of those lightning bolt things that I sketched in already. And this is another water-based body paint. It really works so well on the body. It does not work well for blending. You cannot, um, like say, I, I tried this years ago and I added it to my face, thinking that I would be able to blend the different colors together on my face. No, 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 no. Um, it's best for just sort of a solid color. And then you can go in with powders and um, blend things and highlight and contour that way if you so chose. I think that's the case anyway. That's my experience. Um, so now I'm going in with black again and just filling in all of the spots that I did not get yet. Um, and I really liked how this turned out. <laughs> it was it was quite fun. I felt kind of cool and edgy <laughs> with this. Um, and just get, you know, continuing, continuing along. I'm still trying to figure out the right amount of water that I am supposed to add to these water-based paints. Sometimes I add too much, sometimes I add too little. Eh, we're gonna get it eventually. And just extending that down as far as I can. Oh, another great thing about the water-based paint is that you just hop in the shower and you know it falls right off. <laughs> so that's pretty great. When I had been using a cream foundation on my body, oh my goodness. It made the towel filthy so quickly. Um, sprayed my face down with a setting spray. It's a, a Morphe setting spray. And now going in with shimmer, adding it above, uh, below my uh, brow bone, uh, eyebrows, shall we say, and adding it to my cheeks just a little bit this time. I didn't really need that much of it, I didn't think. Um, not for this look. And then some to the center of the nose, of course. Um, that is almost always something that I do. And now I'm going in with lip gloss over those gigantic lips. I love lip gloss. I have been using it every single time I do makeup of late. At the last second, I decided to further accentuate the um, cut cheek contour with black eyeshadow. Just going in with a small brush, trying to be subtle about it. I'm glad that I did it. I think it needed an extra oomph, extra bump. I put a lot of extra lip gloss on, by the way, more than I needed, and it kept dripping, dripping, dripping all over the place. And now I'm adding um, glue, a uh, lash glue, to the corners of my eyes and applying little gemstones with tweezers. Two different sizes. Um, and now I'm going in with mascara. Uh, my lashes become completely white with a uh, translucent powder flying everywhere, so I must go in with mascara. And now popping on eyelashes. I do believe I made these 
um, right before I popped them on, I cut that bit because I was looking down at my desk the entire time. Snore! Um, but I sat there and made these. I stacked, actually I had some that were a little bit stacked already, and I just stacked a few more and added some construction paper. You know what? I can't remember if I made these <laughs> or if I had them made already. Either way, I popped them on. And then I went in and popped some bottom lashes on. I was very careful with the lashes this time. I think I'm starting to get the hang of it. The corners of both the top and the bottom lashes always pop up. And then, you know, if the corners pop up, the lashes tend to fall. I was very careful this time, took my time, and got it nailed down. And that is it, you guys. Thank you so much for watching, and here is the final transformation.